Okay, the learning activities including the uh, uh, literature reading and the summary and the reflection uh, posting. So you needed to post your reflection uh, on the forum. So I will show you the uh, platform I already uh, enrolled you and also create a forum for you as well as create a meeting room for you. So you can use the platform to post your uh, literature review, your reflection, and also you can discuss things with your peers, no matter where you are, as long as you have an internet. And uh, of course, we have SIG, which means I hope you guys can uh, think about what you want to do at the end of this course. Uh, according to the discussion with, uh, with Sahana and the thread, and, uh, uh, we think you can start, you can take the thinking, uh, skill or something. What you have done, what you are doing or what you will do, uh, later as your first priority. Of course, if you really don't want to do that, you want to try some other things, it is okay. It is also okay. Uh, but uh, if you can, you can use your current topic as your, um, SIG topic. So you will not do things twice and um, uh, make more efforts on that. And then uh, I hope you can discuss, of course, uh, the discussions can happen um, at any moment. So you can discuss synchronously, which means you can discuss face to face with your um, uh, peers in the lab or you can uh, discuss your thoughts on the website uh, uh, by posting your thoughts and ideas and uh, anything else. So that is a synchronous and asynchronous uh, uh, discussion. Because we only have uh, two days a week, which means sometimes you probably want to post something for me, okay? Because not all of you will be in the lab. So if you want to uh, share something, share some idea, or asking uh, some questions, please just feel free to post. Uh, the problem is, according to our experience in Aspasa University, in the past, in 2007, um, 2005 to 2007, we tried this, this kind of mechanism. We allow students to post their question online and we answer that, we respond that. But we found that is not good because most of the students, they fail. Most, more than 70, 70%, 70 percent, 70 percent students, they fail the course. So after that, in 2007, we change our strategy, we change to Okay, you, you post your question, and uh, some others can post their thoughts and answer for you. As long as your answer is not uh, far, far away from the correct answer, we won't interfere. Okay, uh, in that case, we found that uh, actually almost 70% students, they pass the course. So that is, that is a kind of uh, social learning, that is a kind of learning uh, by uh, cooperation, by discussion, by peer discussions. And uh, actually, that is the foundation of MOOCs. I don't, I don't know if you guys know what is MOOCs. Uh, for the new students, probably you don't know. MOOCs stands for Massively Online Open, uh, open Online um, Courses. Okay, who proposed that? Ah, Sabaska University. Yes, you are right. Actually, if you Google MOOCs, you find the Wikipedia, you will find uh, that uh, this idea actually is proposed and implemented in Sabaska University at the very first. But then, you know, things will get in change. So at the end, you will find some very famous uh, a platform for MOOCs, and that is not um, what we have done. And actually, they have two branch, two branch at the end. One branch is still our idea. Our idea is um, we think learning can happen while you are working together, and um, 
not necessary uh, to have teachers to interview something like that. But uh, another approach that is what you saw um, in the in the current market. That is another idea. So basically, both of them are okay, and both of them are not giving you any uh, credit or certificate after you took a MOOCs because MOOCs is massively massively means uh, a course can have more than 2,000 more than 20,000 students to take this course so what can I do I have a 10 student 20 students this is too busy for me already because okay 20% um, of you may ask a question once a week so that means I have I needed to answer your question from time to time and I have never have a chance to take a break so uh, if I have 20,000 students 1% or 2% means 200 students ask question and I cannot answer that so see you cannot have a teacher to teach a MOOC course and you need a dozen, 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 dozen hundreds of tutors to help the course. But uh, you know, that is impossible. That is impossible. You want to have a tutor, you want to have a teaching assistant, you need to pay. So do you think a university want to pay that? No. No university want to pay additional cost, extra cost for having MOOC. So their idea is simple. Okay, I have a MOOC so I can have more students and I can still use my faculty members. No. So like uh, our neighbor, University of Alberta, their professor says, sorry, no MOOC. Why? Because my office hour is only these two hours per week. I won't do anything extra. So don't ask me question online. If you want to ask a question, please. At that moment, at that two hours, come to me. And uh, after that two hours, sorry, I have other things to do. Remember, as a professor, uh, we have uh, we needed to do forty percent of uh, teaching, forty percent of um, researching, and uh, twenty percent is service. That service is not a service for students. That service is service to the university. So I always, I always tell my students, my graduate students, I say, okay, I only have 40% 40, 40 time for you guys. Which means a week I have 35 hours. 40% means I have only 12 hours for the, the uh, teaching. And I have a course. So for example, if I have, for example, I have two courses, six hours done. I only have another six hours. And uh, what do you think the list is how I needed to do? I needed to revise my course. Not only teach, I still needed to prepare my course and uh, something others. And I also needed to create a new course. In that case, you guys have no time left, just the two hours or one hour. And uh, see, if you have 12 students, you needed to fight for the one hour or two hours per week. Something like that. So uh, that is the problem: asynchronous and asynchronous um, discussions. There is a there was a professor who who talked to me and asked me to help her, he, her design a course, an online course. Once I created the course, I designed the course for her. She said, "No way! I couldn't teach. I saw." The, if I have an online course, I can have more time in doing my research. But now you say, even at home, I needed to respond to students' uh, discussion. And uh, if students want to do the group discussion in the midnight, I needed to attend. Or I, I, I don't need to attend, but I needed to watch the recording later. So it took me more time than the traditional classroom. See, that is that's is the misunderstanding. Most of people always think that uh, e-learning or learning online course, online courses are a, a better way for um, reduce the loading, the workload of a teacher. But uh, in fact, that is not true. In fact, uh, uh, in the most of the case, teachers needed to pay more efforts on 
either prepare, preparing their courses, over teaching, and other things. Okay, so, but it's okay for me. I always do that. I always check email, and, and as, as soon as I saw your posting, as soon as uh, I see there is a cry wrong direction, deviation is too large, I will jump in and I will uh, talk. So uh, just post if you have anything to say. And the learning activity, you already have uh, uh, saw that uh, um, two days ago. So basically, you will start to choose your literature from today. After the, today's class, I will post some literature in no matter what kind of form because I don't, I didn't, I didn't alter them when I read a paper. See, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I review papers more than 130 to 150 papers a year, which means I needed to review a journal article almost uh, one or two days. I needed to, to read uh, at least one. So when I read them, when I find, uh, oh, this, this research is interesting, then I will note it down. Oh, the research, this paper talk should be very useful. So I will write it down. And then that become my literature list for students. Why I needed to do that? Because when I review a paper, the paper belongs to this year, which means usually we, when we write a paper, we hope you can have at least one third literature reviewed for the last three years at least one third, which means if you have 24 literature reviewed, you need to review at least eight literature for the last three years. And you need to add, have at least half literature within five years. Okay, more is better. Why we need to do that? Because in that case, you can convince your reviewer saying, yes, see, this is very important topic. I read uh, 20 or 30 literature regarding this topic within three years, and no one think about that. That's very important. If you read the uh, 1980s or even 1800s literature, then people say, why you do that? Or you do mobile technology, but uh, you read a paper like uh, 2003. Do you think uh, the mobile device in 2003 is the same like uh, today's? No, that is true. So why you read that? Of course, we will read some very important, very famous uh, and uh, uh, foundation um, literature, no doubt. For example, we will read uh, John Novak's uh, literature that is, uh, belongs to 1980-something. So we will read that, no, no doubt. And uh, sometimes we will read uh, some review article, which means in 2006, someone already reviewed um, the past 10 years literature, and I will read that. And uh, so I don't need to worry about uh, my background uh, back, back to 2006. Okay, so from now on, you will need to find uh, some literature to review, and you can see the class, and I hope you can read the literature related to the class. So you can, uh, you can discuss with us and you can present what you read, um, which is corresponding to this week's, uh, topic. Um, that will be fine. That will be better. Of course, if you don't have, uh, time, sometimes as a PhD student, sometimes you have a lot of other things needed to do. I know, I know that uh, I had been there before. So, um, so depending on your time, trying to your best to find literature read, uh, read to read, and uh, you you can you can choose other literature which belongs to your area and but uh, related to the topic, no doubt. But uh, please post the, the literature you find first, so I can check if that literature is really worth two hours reading or three hours reading, I don't want to waste of your time. So 
uh, you can post the, you, the literature you found and uh, then say, oh, why I want to read this? Because some reasons. And then I can check it for you very quickly and tell you, no, don't bother. For the, the reason you want to read only in abstract. So don't need, don't need to spend three hours just because the abstract is saying that, but the, the content is okay. So that is our uh, learning activities, and we will do that. We will do that uh, uh, from time to time. Basically, we have a list units, or you can say topics. Uh, that is uh, the first one is introduction, and the second one is e-learning. And the third one, as I said, I want to start from application. So we will talk about game-based learning first, and then mobile context of well application. And then we will talk about the knowledge structures they use or they propose. Once you know all of the knowledge structure, then you can think about how to use the knowledge structure, how they access the knowledge structure, how they you know, design the application with the knowledge structure. So we will talk about techniques. So basically, we, we are talking about this unit. And that will be our weekly topic. And uh, this is also uh, what you will do after that. See, once we talk about our structure, once we talk about application, you can think about, oh, I like a game, so I want to create a game. Uh, mobile, mobile is good. Game is also good. How about mobile game? And then you see our structure. Oh, I want to teach debugging. How teach a student how to debug the program? So, hmm, I can you probably I can use this kind of knowledge structure. At the end, you can come out your idea and your dream, and you can share with others. I hope you can share with others so others can see if they are also want to do the same thing with you. If they want, they can join you, and you can create an SIG group. So the timeline, I, I tried to, uh, to create a timeline here so you can have a clear idea of which week we are doing uh, what kind of topics or what kind of learning activities. So um, now it's July 24th, so July 24th, July 29th, and July 30th, 31, that's uh, uh, three classes and we will talk about e-learning. And the one and the two, that's a, we are referred to you uh, previous. One and the two, that is our learning activity. You will choose your literature and you will read literature and uh, uh, we hope you can present that at the number three, item number three, the learning activity. So see, from August 5th, you will see August 7 and August 14, we have a learning activity three, number three, which means I hope you can present uh, the paper, the literature you read. Of course, um, if you are not audit this course, not the audit student of this course, then uh, we will have some kind of evaluation criteria. I will explain that later. And um, each one, you will have 20 minutes. 20 minutes to present a paper. That should be enough for most of the paper. But if you read a literature which has uh, 50 pages, 60 pages, then that's probably not enough. But uh, remember, in the past, most of uh, journal articles, they are 30, 40, 50 pages. But then nowadays, Actually, journal papers are only 12, 12 uh, 14 pages, and uh, very few, they say, okay, um, 20 pages, something like that. So not, not that idea, more is better, no, no, no. Clear and uh, useful is better. So, so when you read the paper, you will find the trends. In the past, the, the, the paper has a very lengthy content, and nowadays, uh, they, they, have, they don't have such kind of thing. And uh, you can see that each week, we will have something to do. For the midterm exam week, that is what I will need to discuss with you later, because I'm not sure uh, how the exam works 
in the IIT Bombay because uh, even we don't have a midterm exam. I don't know if you have other class uh, which has a midterm exam. And also, I don't know about your role because sometimes as teaching assistant, you need to be a proctor of the exam for undergraduate level or other graduate level courses. So I'm not sure about your time, but uh, if we can, if we can, uh, we can choose either uh, September 9th or September 11 uh, to have this class again. Uh, why? Because unfortunately, I will be uh, in Romania on September 23rd. So, which means uh, on September 23rd, we cannot have a class because I'm not here. But uh, if we can have uh, a class uh, on September 11 over nice, then that's it. that should be okay. Okay, if if we cannot find that time, then we need to think about another strategy. So uh, I will post everything I talked here. So don't don't be worried about uh, you you don't remember the time. You don't even remember what what things you need to do. Uh, that's is what I asked uh, someone that, uh, yesterday. So I trying to mark the holiday. Uh, so we probably don't have a class on that days, like uh, the green one and the blue one, because uh, according to my survey, the blue one is a national holiday. The green one is uh, some kind of regional holiday, something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm I correct because I check the the book I have. So, as you can see, in the beginning, in the middle of September, you will be forming your SIG. So from that moment, you will start to think more details about your project. And uh, you will need to tell us your idea and the goal, your specific goal and your specific idea of your SIG uh, project. And uh, then, uh, as you can see, in the uh, middle of uh, October, you will need to talk ab about the detail of your design and uh, analysis, which means at that stage, we will know if your work can be done. Or, sorry, I don't think you probably can you probably need two more months to do that. Or you are totally wrong, something like that. But I don't think the totally wrong is, will be a, an option because in the most of case, we will discuss. At the end, you will present your final work. So the final work, I hope, I hope that is at least a prototype. So you can prove, see, I built such a little unit or such a little um, for example, one class, and uh, that works. In that case, I can create more contents later, and then I can do some experiment. Okay. So that is our timeline. And uh, once again, I still need uh, probably Jake's help uh, or others' help to, to tell me if we need to have exam, final exam or something. Because today we don't have uh, Professor Sahana. Okay, our evaluation criteria looks like this. First of all, we have a literature reading and a presentation for 20%. And then we have a participation. Participation, not, a, not a, you are here. I don't care if you are here, really. Actually, I, in my past, I, I, started, I started to teach uh, university since 2002. I started to teach uh, industry since 1996. I never, I never, you know, pick up saying, oh, JK, are you here? No, no, I never do that because I don't care. I even don't care if you are sleeping or not because as long as you know what I'm talking, then that's fine. As long as you don't bother others while sleeping, then that's fine because someone sleep uh, with, you know, a bit of louder voice. So, okay. I care, what I care is what you have done. So that is, that is a good thing uh, 
uh, for online education because everything, everything you had had done will be recorded. So we know, we know. Oh, see this guy, he posts so many things every week. Uh, he has some kind of a new idea or source coming out, something like that. According to my um, calculation or my state statistics, uh, a master student if. Uh, he or she wants to graduate from our program. He or she at needs to post at least 400 to 600 articles and postings, including the discussion, including uh, you know the literature he or she is doing and the, or what he or she has done so far, like a progress report, something like that. If a student, if a student at a, his or her second years, you still see only a hundred something in his or her foreign, then you probably already know the answer. That is according to my experience, because all my students, no matter face-to-face -face students or uh, online students, I asked them to join my cyber research lab. So everyone has his or her own foreign. And uh, I, I ask uh, him or her to post anything if they think not private. If, if you have a private thing like you want to get married, then you don't need to post. Of course you can, but uh, you don't need to. So, so you post everything unless you think that it's private, you want to talk to me directly. So in that case, everything will be recorded. Your participation will be recorded too and calculated too according to that. And then design and analysis. So we will see if your design analysis is feasible, is workable, is complete enough, something like that. That is 35%. And at the end, the final work is also 35% unless we have final exam. If we have final exam, then we probably 32 or 30%. Okay. You will say, why, why not a deduct three or five percent from participant participation because I think participation is very important. I also think the design and the analysis is important. And uh, to be honest, I really want to see you have some final work come, come out. But um, as long as you design and analyze very, you know, comprehensively in depth, then that should be fine. So for the literature reading and the presentation, of course, we, no matter which level, students always ask the same question. So how many I should read? And I always don't want to say that. Because when I say that, you can expect that uh, most of the students will do the minima. OK. But I know that is very important for most of the students. So I give you very low standard that is a two from given that list and a two from uh, whatever whatsoever you you find okay so that is about four four papers and uh, uh, when you read you will post when you after you read you will also post and your presentation is about 15 percent and uh, we will evaluate your presentation according to list five uh, criteria Preparation. So when you get on stage, you already prepare. Every everything is under your control. Nothing will going happen wrong. That's his preparation. So, but I, I I will not tell you this example. I will tell you this example after first student present. Okay, I will tell you what is the very good presentation I have ever seen. Okay, then expression. Of course, you need to uh, talk about your presentation. You need to uh, describe things. So that is very important to express. That remember, in Canada, we have a very very good word for that in plain language. When we when we write a proposal, when we write a like a national science uh, proposal, you know what? Our mentor, our mentors, they are 
retired professors or very famous professors, they said, after you write something, please give a list to everyone you know, including your mother, your grandmother. If they can understand, then that is a good proposal. So in plain language, which means don't explain the terms or things with terms. You need to try to find some, some, some way to explain things for people who don't have a certain background. Okay. Attitude. Of course, most of the time, in the, in the most of the time, uh, attitude actually, people always get a hundred percent marks. But uh, still, some people, they just uh, show us that uh, he doesn't care. If he doesn't care, why we need to care? I give you a 60%, that is should be fine. So, so your attitude will make people think you are very serious about that. Okay. Question answering. As I said, uh, your peers will ask question. If they don't, I will ask a question. So how about your answer? Can you answer that uh, quickly? Of course, needed to be correct, not quickly, but negative or quickly is wrong. Quickly and correct. And that's if you, your question answer. That is also why I say, okay, if you are his or her friend trying to ask some question. Okay. Also, asking question. You know, this it, is, this is bored. If you stand here and find that no one ask you questions. Um, I know some of you probably already submitted your uh, conference papers before, and some of you probably don't. When you submit your, your paper to a conference, usually your paper will be accepted as a full paper, short paper, and a poster. Okay, of course, probably rejected. That is also an option. But uh, when you when your paper be accepted, in the most of the case, people will be very sad to see their paper is accepted by as a poster. But on the contrary, I need to tell you that first of all, if the conference is a good conference, then the category actually has their meaning. Full paper means your work is very complete. You have a good literature uh, review, you have a good ba research background, you have a good research question to answer, and uh, you have uh, something coming out, and uh, you did experiment or pilot study, and uh, you collect data, and uh, you have uh, some hypothesis, and uh, you prove that. It's complete work. This kind of work can be accepted as a full paper. Of course, each conference has their uh, maximum of full paper acceptance rate. Uh, that is another case. Show paper. If a conference is a good conference, then show paper means your, your work probably is not a very complete. Probably you have some system or tool coming out. And you test it with a very small pilot study or very small focus group. Something like that. And you don't have a concrete uh, data to explain or to prove your, to verify your hypothesis. That will be show paper. For the post paper, your, your work is conceptual, or your work is a dream, or your work is a pure technology or tool or system, then we will accept your paper as poster. Why? Because post se session usually has more than one hour. We hope you can have a time to discuss to talk, to show your system. If your paper is accepted as the show paper, you only have 10 minutes to present. How can you show your system? No way. If your paper is accepted as a full paper, you only have 15 minutes to 20 minutes. So that is not enough either. So I like post paper because when, when I have, have a show paper or full paper, actually I will be presenting the paper with other five or four authors. Which means I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten audience here, but uh, five of them actually are authors. They are forced to come here. And another five, okay, 
they probably two of them are interested to another guy's work and the three of them are interested in another guy's work. Actually, no one interested my work, right? So after I present, you will find, do you have any question? Hitting none, and then your chair will say, okay, I asked a question because he just wanted to make sure the things will not be getting cold, right? So, but the poster, when you have poster, you stand up in front of your poster, and then someone who has interest on your work, they will stop, and they will see, and they will read, and they probably will say, can you explain something for me? And then you have 15 or more minutes to discuss with them. And you can even get their business card, and probably you can work with them later because you are a PhD student, you have four or five years, you have two years more, so why not? And remember, attending conference is very important. I started to write my first conference paper in 1995, so as I mentioned before, and I published my first conference paper and journal paper in 1995. And uh, since 1998, I attend an international conference almost twice or th three times a year. And in the most of the case, I didn't get any funding from that. Before I, 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 I hired as, uh, as a uh, assistant professor, I only got two times fund funding. One time, I got a, a funding for only flight tickets. Another time, I got a funding for food, everything. Because, but uh, that time is uh, was when I was a postdoc uh, fellow, so I got a full funding. But see, 1998 to 2007, that is about 10 years. That is about 10 years. I attended uh, more than 20, 30 international conferences and all paid by myself and why I applied for the job in Canada. Because I knew many people. I always said that you needed to at least know five people in a conference, and then keep three or two of them are closed. In that case, after five years, you know 10 or 20 uh, people, they are familiar with you, and when they have a job, when they have a position, when they have an opportunity, they will think about you. That is, that is, the, that is the, what I say, investment. Okay, so basically, that is um, way out of the topic. So when you are here and no one asks a question, and that is very, very bad. When I stand on the stage, actually I'm an actor. So the better our audience show, I will feel exciting and I will, I will perform better. So that is the problem when you do a presentation, trying to ask uh, people questions so they will, you know, get you back. So participation, I, just I said, you will post your reflection, you will post everything, you will post your idea, you will post your question for other students. So your comments and the reflection, they are counted. For the design analysis and the uh, final work, we use some kind of individual weight and the team weight. In that case, if you are the uh, major contribution contributor in your team, then you will, your score will be higher. Of course, if you do nothing, then it will happen. Others will get a high marks and you will get a very low mark and even fail. That's what will happen. When I was a student, I always hate teamwork because every time when we do the teamwork, someone will not do anything, but he or she will get the same marks just like me. So I don't like that. I like to show you a difference. So your preparation day task, we already seen that before. And uh, uh, let me show you uh, here. I already created an account for all of you. When you see that, uh, that uh, screen, 
uh, trying to refresh as many times as you want and uh, press control or LT button so make sure that you have fresh start okay so when you log in you will see your course and you can use the drop down list to find your course and just as I say see here is my cyber research lab so uh, basically my cyber research lab right now is more than 10 gigabyte or something the content so when you choose your course you will see um, this screen I already created a forum for these seven students because I don't know about others JK uh, email a link which ask you guys can uh, fill up your uh, username and, and the name on that form so I I created the forum according to that so in your forum you can post anything remember I will suggest you to subscribe subscribe that forum so in any case um, someone post uh, anything you will receive a notification so you can just uh, subscribe and then I will I will post something here in the announcement board just after this class I already prepared everything but I I don't want to uh, post it um, for now before before I talk and then when you click on the group discussion here is the link group discussion you will find sorry didn't click, click here you will find there is a drop-down list here you can see all classes you can see JK you can see Lakshmi Rito uh, Anurag okay uh, so you can click on your name when you click on your name for example I click on JK probably I should make it larger let me see if I can zoom in yes okay yeah zoom in is better so see you have a discussion forum of course you can you can go to your discussion forum from outside you don't need to do that here here is a group meeting Colin and also a brief meeting Colin group meeting they, they are two different um, software one is joinnet another one is Adobe connect they are all for web conference system depending on you for example I know JK and I also see that uh, uh, Rito used the uh, uh, Apple Apple so oh, another Apple okay you are Apple fans I this reminded me I shouldn't say any bad words for that <laughs> okay uh, because you are using Apple so you cannot use the joinnet because joinnet is Windows only um, things but the joinnet is very good according to our experience we uh, I was a committee member uh, which select the software uh, web conference system for our university and uh, we found that the join net is very good very quick and uh, its function is very powerful which means you can print anything directly to the whiteboard but uh, if you use Adobe connect you cannot you can only upload the document like a PowerPoint a slide uh, like Excel file you cannot uh, simply upload anything but uh, JoinNet can and JoinNet has, has many many good function but uh, unfortunately uh, Apple iOS platform cannot use that so you will need to use a breeze meeting when you first uh, first time you use the breeze meeting you just uh, click create and uh, you will have the meeting room permanently but uh, remember when you leave the meeting room don't just uh, close the window you need to click meeting and uh, say end the meeting why because if you don't end the meeting by yourself then others they cannot uh, uh, enter the meeting room later as long as you are inside the meeting room they can but uh, they cannot uh, uh, get into the meeting room without you okay so remember to click on end the meeting and then close the window okay that is the trick part also I will create uh, I will create the uh, another um, SIG forum later when you have SIG formed 
So uh, here we have a uh, creator. If you are using Windows, you can use a uh, group meeting. You can click on settings, and then you can type your meeting name, and it will be recorded automatically unless you don't want. On the other hand, if you are using Adobe Connect, sorry, Adobe Connect cannot record a meeting automatically, which means if you want to record your meeting, you need to click on meeting and click on record. And remember, you need to also click on record again when you stop. So uh, that is also not a so user-friendly part, but uh, as long as you get used to, then it should be fine. Let me get uh, it back. And uh, let me, let, let you see here. This is all class. I test it for you. So you can see here you have a join button and the recording list. So I, I, I hope you guys can find the time to record an introduction, a very short introduction about yourself or even the work you have done so you can get familiar with the system. When you do the recording, as you can see, everything is recorded, so you can replay, review it later. I always tell students that this kind of platform is very good. Why? Because I don't know about your experience, but in the past, when I was a student, sometimes my supervisor tell me like this way and uh, one week later he changed his mind so he say no 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 you should go this way but uh, you don't have proof and now you have proof you say see in the three minutes and the 45 seconds you say you want me to this okay so that is actually that is the uh, advantage of, of technology and uh, depending on how you use that okay so let me go back here. I have all instruction here. And uh, you can take a look uh, later when you get on the, the uh, things. Literature review. This is very important when you do the literature review. I hope you can post these things. What is the thing? When you want to read a, a literature, please post an article with a subject like uh, my God dash self-selection dash uh, a partial title, pa partial paper title, partial research title. And uh, tell me the literature title. Tell me who, who are the authors. And uh, also tell me if in the future you want to uh, put uh, this literature in your reference section, how will you write? And uh, if you want to cite this uh, this literature in your main test, how will you write? And also, what is the abstract of this, this literature and the keywords? Most important thing is the reason you want to read this literature and, the, and the, this literature's PDF file so I can check it out. So once you read that paper, you can post another refraction posting. And the refraction posting has 6 to 10, that is different from the earlier one. 6 is the motivation of this literature. Remember, trying to use your own words to write. Because um, in the future, you probably want to copy and paste this to your paper or your thesis or your dissertation or project proposal. If you don't write in your own words, then Something bad will happen when you copy and pass, okay? And the purpose, so you will summarize their goal, their purpose, their objective, and their contributions. And uh, what's, what's is their experiment? How they do experiment? You, you probably will say, why I need to know that? Because if you know how people in your field are doing experiment, you can use the same strategy doing the same experiment. And then you probably can compare with them. And the finding, what their, what their findings are. The most important is your source and your reflection. Is this research is good? 
is this research enough? Is there any gap or any comes uh, this research has and uh, you think they can improve? Something like that. Again, you will have the PDF and you can have your presentation files here in that case which means you are already forced yourself to have your presentation file ready for our class. Here is the reference and in-test citation. Uh, when you cite a paper, you usually you will use a different uh, way. For example, you probably will use MLA, and uh, you probably will use uh, Chicago. MLA is, uh, is a modern language association. So this association, they propose uh, some kind of um, uh, style uh, for you to cite others' work in your work. So here is APA, APA. And uh, HHCC, this kind of uh, citation, is, uh, uh, if uh, my memory is correct, that uh, should be some kind of a Chicago or, or other, other way. So when you cite a, when you cited the literature in your main test, you will say, okay, Finn and the Carlis, they do something in 2014 and something like that. Or you will put uh, this kind of information at the end of your sentence. Remember, before the period, not after the period. For the reference style, this style is not APA style. It's not a MLA style. It's not a Chicago style. This style is my experience. Why? In the most of the conference and the journal and all books, actually publisher, they have their own style. They probably will alter a little bit uh, slightly from the APA or from the MLA or from Chicago. They will create their style. For example, this is APA style. But if you are asking to have your reference in MLA style, then you need to know author's first name, complete first name. See, that is the problem. That is the problem. You don't know. You always write your reference like that, so you never know what is the thing's first name, complete first name? Then, then that will be a problem for you when you uh, cite, uh, when you're trying to put your reference in your work, which you, you want to publish uh, in certain journal or conference later. OK, so I will post the list uh, in our forum, so you can, uh, you can take a look later. So today, we are going to do this. Most of you probably already know what is e-learning, but uh, some of you don't. So I'm talking about this from another way, based on my history. Because I started to do the um, e-learning things since 1993, 1993. So that is a very long time ago. So today, every word I said here is just a Presenting myself doesn't presenting Asabasa University doesn't presenting uh, IIT doesn't presenting anyone. So I will talk about e-learning from computer assisted uh, assisted instruction to free free uh, classroom. Remember the terms we use here. The definition will probably change a little bit at the present day. Why? Because people always change. In the past, we say computer-assisted instruction. You can understand the, the idea from the term, which means I can use computer to help me instruct. OK, help me teach it. But at two years later, three years, people say, no, 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 no. See, you help, you teach, but the student doesn't get any help. So they say, how about we change it to computer-assisted learning? So now computer can help students learn. And then 
they say, ah, why we need to use computer? Can we use anything? Sure. So how about we change it to e-learning? So actually, every, every term actually, for me, they are just the history. Okay, from time to time, and then, then you know, researchers, they say, no, 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 no. E-learning is not good. How about we say mobile learning? Use mobile device. And then researchers, they say, mobile learning is too small. You say mobile learning, let's say it's mobile phone, something like that. How about we use ubiquitous learning, pervasive learning, so we can learn anytime, anywhere. But uh, see, when they say ubiquitous learning can let uh, what uh, we say the students learn at any time, anywhere, just like mobile learning. When we say mobile learning, we say students can learn at any time, anywhere, on the bus, on the traffic, something like that. So that is that is the history. That is the history. I don't know why people they always trying to uh, create new terms. For example, we have data mining, but uh, people say no, oh, data mining is not good. How about educational data mining? What's the different? Just because you are using data mining techniques to mine um, uh, educational data, and then now people they have uh, new terms called big data. Okay, big data. What is big data? Big data is data mining, but uh, mining uh, different kind of database, large source, different um, structure, structure data, all the same time, and uh, a lot of data. And then people, they don't like big data. They say, how about we mine, we, ha we, we have a, a term like uh, learning analytics. Actually, learning analytics is a kind of big data, but uh, they say we analyze learning data from your homework, from your score, your marks, from your performance, from your behavior. So that is also big data, but, uh, but uh, the domain limited to learning. So I really don't know. And uh, I also don't like uh, a term. This term is really, I really don't like. What is the term? Cloud computing. Why? This reminds me that uh, actually we are going back to 1970 or any, anything earlier. Because in the past, we don't have a personal computer. So we have a mainframe in a kind of room. And then everyone used their console to connect to the mainframe. And the, all the applications are there. All the data are there. We just need to have a, a window to connect. Is that a, Something like uh, your cloud computing? Yes. See, when people, they invented the personal computer, they say, no, 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 we don't like a mainframe. We want you to keep your data. We want you to have your software on your hand. Now they say, no, 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 we want everything in the cloud so you can access. That is, uh, I really, this, this term is what I don't like. Because I really want everything in my computer. I really don't want my everything in another one's computer or cloud. So, see, that is my point. Today, any term I explain to you belongs to my idea, my concept, my history. So, some people today still saying computer-assisted instruction, and they explain the computer-assisted instruction to everything. But in the past, when we don't have e-learning, when we don't have mobile learning, we only have these terms, that is different. That is totally different things. So let's go one by one. Uh, what should I do? Okay. Why? I really don't like a new PowerPoint, because a new PowerPoint, when you click F5, it's become two screen. And one screen is a preparation, another screen is what you see. And then you cannot just press page down, page up. So now I can. First of all, computer assisted instruction, as I said, that is just uh, we want to use computer to help us to teach. Okay, in that case, in that case, 
At that moment, as you know, the geek like me, actually we don't care about educational philosophy. We don't care about uh, our best pedagogic. So usually CAI program is used for certain topic without any educational thoughts. We just think, okay, I can use the computer to help. Okay, that is uh, uh, computer assisted learning, uh, assisted instruction. And uh, back, back to that moment, many people started to say multimedia. They say, oh, if I use media to teach our students, then they will learn better. And that is not, a, that is not new for now. Everything we have right now, we use uh, uh, media. And uh, in that case, CAI, usually back in that time, um, we talk about multimedia. And uh, that is uh, a good thing because researcher find uh, Actually, people can remember what they have been told. Only 20% if they only hear. But they can remember more if they can see and hear. And they can remember more if they can see and hear and doing. So that is, that is true because we always say learning by doing. We always, always say, for example, if you want to learn a programming language, how to learn. You need to develop, you need to uh, coding, you need to keep writing. So you will find uh, some bugs, you will know why this, this kind of errors happen. So when you write a dozen, hundred application, you will become a very good programmer. No matter uh, how you do that, but uh, you're trying to debug and uh, you're trying to fix your own strategy and uh, you learn. Same thing. If you want to learn e-learning, come on on the stage and teach others, then you can learn e-learning. I always tell my PhD students because they always want to become a university professors later. I always say that you need to teach others so you can learn. You can really learn because when you teach you are encountered some kind of questions which you have never think about that before because others, they are not you. They will think about that and they ask you and then, wow, what is that? And then you will know uh, something you have never thought about that. So computer assisted learning is very good because computer assisted learning have multimedia, have everything else so they can help us, uh, students maybe they learn better. Then, just like I said, people started to say, say why only help a teacher? How about help your learners? So, computer-assisted learning. In computer-assisted learning, we have a very famous uh, project called Logo. So, what is Logo? Logo is a programming language. Logo is not a uh, programming language like what we have, uh, like Java or something. This is a functional language, which means you can have a command. Each command will ask your computer or robot doing something. And uh, it's turned out that the people talk this kind of things like a turtle graphics. So, many similar uh, application coming out uh, by using turtle, that is a, a kind of a small robot, and over something on your screen, and you can say, okay, so go a hundred or two hundred pixels uh, uh, according to sixty angle, sixty degree angle, and it will go, and it will draw a line, and then something like that. So you will control the robot or control the the things on your command. So. That is the first uh, uh, computer assisted learning system which has uh, uh, we call the pedagogic or educational theory behind the scene. And uh, CAL is very good. Why? Because first of all, students they can learn by their own. They don't need to. Some some people they are afraid to uh, uh, talk in the classroom. But uh, and they they don't want to make any mistakes in the classroom. But uh, with the CAL, they can they can make a mistake because no one will know. At least at that moment, no one will know. 
because in, in that back in that time CLO is a program and there is no internet so nothing will be collected and no trace will be be uh, recorded tracked so basically they will learn on their own and they don't need to be afraid of any mistake they will they will have and also because that is the computer assisted learning so you have your requirement you have your difficulty and uh, uh, the computer can fit your needs so that is very good and um, of course the computer can give you some feedback okay so computer assisted learning seems very good and it's very good uh, for self learning for self past learning okay but we have problems okay we have a list four kinds of uh, computer assisted learning system uh, actually you can add another two uh, I, I can tell you later the first one is drill and practice which means you can practice something from time to time keep it repeatedly that is not not a problem and you can you can test you can have a test a thousand times so you, whenever you see a question you can answer you can just respond very quickly so that is uh, one thing the other one is a tutorial and which one is the most common to be seen in the in the real world so this kind of uh, program or we say computer assisted learning system uh, can provide you some kind of a guide can provide you some kind of assessment and uh, they also allow you to practice so as you can see they have everything they give you content they, they let you learn and then they also assess you the other two time two types simulation and again have been approved very helpful but also more difficult to implement okay simulation which always provide uh, our users or learners that uh, a situation which they cannot uh, um, experience in the real life okay for example uh, we teach pilot how to fly how to pilot their, their plane uh, we cannot do that uh, at the first time right we will let them into the simulator and doing a hundred times and then we can get uh, them on the fly actually I don't know if you guys fly any plane air, air plane before I I had been a camp and uh, uh, a colonel uh, took me to the you know the real fighter that is a real air fighter and um, and he said he told me that okay now we are departing and uh, close actually he is not saying close he said turn our fuel less so we will not have so many so many power to boost our brand and then I made a mistake I turned off the fuel okay fortunately um, he is the main pilot and he can control uh, the scene so so he always put uh, his hand on the on the, the fuel gear and uh, he found that uh, too, too less and then he pushed back but uh, he told me that it's okay even you turn off the fuel we can still you know slightly uh, you know on the sky and we can still go to some air base to, to touch down no problem but uh, see you cannot you cannot allow a pilot to fly at the very first time because they don't know anything so simulator simulation is very important also some physics or chemistry experiment you cannot see that in the real world okay uh, some physics uh, experiment involve the planet and the star and something like that gravity you cannot see but if you have a simulation you can you can uh, feel that you can learn that game in the most most of the case game always has a uh, competitive elements which means you need to compete with others by score or by other way so you have a, a competitive element and the most of important things is uh, you can see games are testing 
Because when you play the game, in the most of the time, you are applying your knowledge that you have learned. Okay, so back at that moment, these four types, the game belongs to a kind of assessment, which you are trying to know what you have learned, so you can apply the, what you have learned in the game playing. Another two, time, two types, as I mentioned, uh, one is the discovery type, that is a kind of inquiry-based learning. And the, uh, the, last one, uh, the last one is problem solving. Is problem solving type. Problem solving type is a very special type, which I, I don't think is, a, is a really work here. What is problem solving? In the problem solving class, teacher will give students a real life problem and ask students to find the answer, find the solution by themselves. They need to do survey. They need to do the brainstorming, discussion, and they will find answers or solution for that real life problem. And the role teacher play, uh, t teacher, teachers are playing a uh, facility. So they will say, hey, how about you? Are you talking about, are you, are you discussing? What, what kind of things you are discussing? And uh, in, in the very uh, special case, uh, teachers will say, well, probably you should change your, uh, your direction, and uh, probably you're missing something. Um, there is a keyword like, uh, for example, grid computing. What is grid computing? You can check it out. So that is a facility. Teachers are not really teach something. So problem solving is a, a kind of a, a way that uh, uh, in, uh, in the beginning was proposed by McGill University in Canada. Uh, for medical students, because medical students, they find students cannot apply what they have learned uh, in the real life. So they propose this kind of strategy for learning. But uh, these two types are not listed here because they are, uh, you know, more later works. When you have a your learning system, okay, this is my first time to see a board tell me that I only have five minutes left. Okay, so, okay, I will stop it just after this. So when you have your learning system, you need to do experiment because if you don't do experiment, you cannot prove your work is worse. Okay, so the most common thing is we usually have a standard, standard test for our students. What is standard test? Standard test like your midterm exam, like your final exam, that is a standard test. So we can make sure that uh, uh, the, the performance we collected are correct, are accurate. And we usually have a pretest to, uh, to, to uh, make our students to tag before the experiment. Why? First of all, we want to know uh, we want to know uh, that our students re, uh, has a similar background. The second thing is we want to know whether they, whether they have uh, their background knowledge is. And then we, we uh, divide them into two groups. One probably control group, another one is experimental group. Usually control group, we use traditional way to teach. And the other group, experimental group, we will use our new technology to test. At the end, we collect the data, we collect the learning result, we collect the interview uh, data, and we can compare the result, compare the, their perceptions and their attitude. Another way is added on the end. That is the interaction analysis. We are not just collecting data. We also record and we observe what the students performed during uh, the experiment. For example, if we wanted to, for example, my system it should be very interesting, should be engaged. But uh, according to my observation, I don't think the students they like, or I don't think the students are engaged. In that case, that is interaction analysis. We want to know if uh, the students, they use the system like what we expect. And uh, also we want to know what kind of strategy they are using when while they, they are using our system. So that is a very important thing. So remember, read our uh, others' literature and find how they do the experiment. Their experiment 
plan and experiment design probably will be yours uh, in the future. Okay, so probably I, I stopped here. So now we already know CAI and CAL, and we also know that most of uh, CAI, CAL research, they are using this kind of evaluation method. Actually, this method still works. Still works nowadays. Of course, probably we will have more uh, data needed to, to be collected. We have more instrument uh, will be used in our experiment, but uh, the basic idea is the same. We still use standard test, we still use pretest, we still divide the students into two or more groups and collect their opinion and the, uh, performance to compare the results. So this is still working. Okay, so today uh, the class is here and uh, end here and uh, I will post whatever we have talked in the forum and you can start to find out your um, literature review um, task okay okay so thank you so much